Throughout cartoon history, many characters fall into the goth subculture. It's usually defined as a person that prefers to wear all black clothing, wear black and white makeup, or like goth music. Goths have been around for a while, from kids' cartoons to adult animated shows. But which of these goths are good people, and which of them are darker than the clothes they wear? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is Cartoon Goths Good to Evil. We only want to mention one goth per show, so if we miss some of your favorite goths, we apologize in advance. As usual, we'll be starting with the most commendable and nicest of the goths. These are the good. The best goth on our list and earning the gold medal of good is Raven from Teen Titans. Raven is the daughter of Trigon and Arella, who was raised in Azeroth amongst many peaceful people. Being the daughter of a massive demon gave her many issues with her lineage and powers, which is evident in her leaving Azeroth. Upon first finding Starfire, she leads the random group of teens into a peaceful approach to the rampaging alien. She is also partly responsible for forming the Teen Titans and saved Jump City countless times. She's even responsible for the eventual defeat of Trigon after realizing that she's actually not a bad person, but a good person. She saved not just Jump City, but the world countless times, and it's no contest that she is the most good on this list. The silver medal of good is going to Mavis from Hotel Transylvania. Mavis is the daughter of Dracula and is a vampire herself. She was raised to fear humans, although she wants to explore the world instead. She's headstrong, curious, and cheerful throughout her adventures. She wants independence from Dracula's overbearing parenting, although she adopts some of his tactics after her son is born. She cares about other people, such as when the zombies dressed as humans were on fire. Holy rabies, you're on fire. Can I do anything? Can I help you? She accepts Jonathan after it's revealed that he's actually a human and not a monster as first thought. She can be overbearing like her father, but she cares about her entire family, monster or human. Mavis may not have saved the world like Raven, but she's a nice person. Earning the bronze medal of good is Danny Phantom's Sam Manson. Sam is Danny's closest friend and an ultra recyclo vegetarian, meaning she won't eat anything with a face. Unique is good. That's why I'm an ultra recyclo vegetarian. She's the first character on the list to call herself a goth canonically, and she's interested in the netherworld. She comes from a rich family, but doesn't like to tell people about it because she wants to be liked on her own merits and not her money. However, she can be selfish. She's partially responsible for Danny's accident, and at one point, accidentally wished away his powers. She can be a hypocrite, never taking the blame for things she's done, but will say that other people need to. She preaches individuality, but pushes her vegetarian lifestyle on other people. However, she takes the fall for things Danny has done to protect him on occasion. Sam is a good friend and isn't all bad, but some of her bad actions cause her to fall a bit further than others. Sally McKnight, aka Thorn from Scooby-Doo, is next. Thorn is the lead singer and main guitarist of the goth band, The Hex Girls. Thorn helps out the Mystery Inc. crew on a few occasions with their mysteries. She practices the Wiccan religion, similar to witch magic, although she isn't confident in those abilities. Like Sam, she's an eco-goth, focusing on the environment while also being gothic. She's protective of her friends, getting angry when her bandmates are in danger. She helps the gang find the band Wildwind that had disappeared and refuses to leave the concert despite being bribed to do so. Thorne is mostly a good person who gets angry at times. Steve's recurring girlfriend, Debbie Hyman from American Dad, is next. Debbie is the resident goth girl at Pearl Bailey High School, who is not a fan of gym class due to her heavier stature. She's the on and off girlfriend of Steve Smith, who hides in the vents of the school to read. It sucks we put our dead in the earth where we can't watch them decompose. She breaks up with Steve multiple times, mostly because he's immature, getting with an actual mature guy. Even though she broke up with Steve, she will help him, using her hold on the goth group to help Steve and company escape the mob that was chasing him. Debbie is a good person, even if she doesn't appear often. But she is a high school girl and a teenager, meaning she can be selfish, ranking her lower than Thorn. Next is Clone High's Joan of Arc. Joan is a clone of the French figure of the same name and a dispassionate, nihilistic atheist. The voices. Finally, the voices. Joan has an unrequited crush on Abe and has to deal with Abe trying to date Cleo. She's cynical, sarcastic, deadpan, and a semi-vegetarian. She's antisocial, only hanging out with Gandhi and Abe during their time at Clone High. 
Joan is also a feminist and an environmentalist. Like some of the earlier people on this list, she is selfish, but not more so than some of them. Rounding out the good section of our list is a goth member of the Loud House, Lucy Loud. Lucy is the younger sister of Lincoln and the oldest of the younger sisters. She's known for popping up at random and surprising people around the house, scaring them. She's gloomy, cynical, deadpan, and mysterious. Even her sisters call her spooky. She's interested in occultism, poetry, and gothic literature. However, she's also interested in an occasional break from the darkness, such as when she reads Princess Pony. She allows Haiku to be her co-president in the Mortician's Club, even though she wanted to be the only president for a time. Lucy's not a bad person, but like Joan, she can be selfish, such as lying about clogging the toilet with her Princess Pony book. You know you did it. Admit it. Confess. She ranks lower than Debbie out of necessity, since she doesn't have a moment similar to Debbie saving Steve, but they are sort of interchangeable. We now move on to the violently neutral section of the list. This is the gray area. Starting up the gray area on our list is Misery from Ruby Gloom. Misery is a young banshee girl and a good friend of Ruby. She's called a walking disaster, as she's clumsy and causes a lot of damage when she's around. Bad things happen to me when it rains. But this seems to be a family curse. She's constantly crying due to a constant storm in her mind, and everyone always tries to cheer her up. When Misery and her family are together, massive destruction follows suit. A harrowing tale, considering every male member of her family drowned in quicksand. Misery isn't bad, but is very neutral. If it wasn't for her curse, she may rank a bit higher on this list. Maybe a surprise for some, but Gwen from Total Drama is next. Gwen is a teenage contestant on the Total Drama series. Gwen is smart, kind-hearted, and independent, while also being sarcastic and cynical. We've really got to work on our strategizing. She doesn't like to be a part of a big group, calling a lot of people sheep for falling in line. She's also cautious of who she lets into her life, which leads to her being seen as antisocial. She'll also stand up for herself if her reputation or her morals are in question. She leads many people to hate her by trying to get with Duncan while he was with Courtney, but she dumps him when she finds out he still has feelings for Courtney. She even votes herself out upon Courtney's request to make it up to her. Gwen is a teen, and they often get into drama, but she's not evil, just selfish. Next is Adventure Time's Marceline. Marceline is the vampire queen and the daughter of the demon Hunson Abadir. Marceline lived through the Mushroom War and dealing with the aftermath of it, including the many monsters. She was turned into a vampire by the Court of Vampires, who she soon after slew. She originally appears as an antagonist, stealing the treehouse from Finn and Jake because she lived there. But as the series goes on, she mellows out and becomes a friend and ally of Finn, Jake, and Princess Bubblegum. She ranks low on the list, mostly because she's violently neutral throughout most of the series. However, she saves the Glass Kingdom and helps Princess Bubblegum in the Gum War. Her good actions are numerous, but she still has more evil actions than anyone who came before her on this list. Next is Ingrid III from Fillmore. Ingrid is a member of the Safety Patrol, as well as Fillmore's partner and best friend. She was once a delinquent, being suspended from her old school for a prank involving a piñata and a stink bomb. She was later sent to a reform school in Nepal before being sent to Fillmore School. While there, she was immediately framed for a crime she didn't commit and admitted to it, wanting to be expelled. After this event, she helps Fillmore and the Safety Patrol throughout many adventures. Allow me. It's a talent for my delinquent past. She ranks below Marceline because she is a delinquent and has been suspended or expelled from at least one school. Ingrid is not the worst, but has more bad actions than Marceline. From the Venture Brothers, Triana Orpheus is next. Triana is the daughter of Dr. Brian Orpheus and a sorcerer known as Tatiana. She is unimpressed by the world, even the mystical parts like her mother's powers or her father's experiments. She's grounded and rational. Unbeknownst to her, Dean has a crush on her, and she unintentionally leads him along before dating him. Sadly, she was written out of the show on a sour note, distancing herself from Dean and the Ventures because Dean was immature and jealous because of Triana's boyfriend, Raven. Triana is not terrible, but she's not a great person either, just insensitive. Next on our list is the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy's Nurgle Jr. Jr. is the son of Nurgle and Billy's aunt, making him Billy's cousin. Being the son of Nurgle, Jr. has a monstrous form that he feels ashamed of, preferring to shapeshift into other forms. 
Much like his father, Junior craves acceptance and can be jealous and possessive because of this. Junior is respectful and content, but falls this low because of his persistence in gaining revenge. He's not that evil, but he doesn't have many good moments. Rounding out the gray area is Vanessa Doofenshmirtz from Phineas and Ferb. Vanessa is the daughter of Dr. Heinz Doofenshmirtz, known for being sharp and sarcastic. Oh, by the way, I'm taking the last escape pod. She cares about her reputation, as evidence in her embarrassment from her dad's attempts to throw parties for her. She occasionally tries busting her dad's evil attempts to her mother, but on other occasions, helps her father. It turns out she inherited some of her father's evil, but doesn't want to reveal this to her father. She supposedly stole a scooter in France and then stole Perry's hover car, not to mention her threatening major monogram with a hairdryer. She's not super evil, but she has evil tendencies, which places her farther down this list. Now we get to the bottom of the barrel. This is the bad to evil category. Starting off this category is Gaz from Invader Zim. Gaz is a sister of Dib and the daughter of Professor Membrane. She's short-tempered, dark, cynical, and antisocial, like a lot of the previous characters. Gaz ranks at the top of this category for a few reasons. She's known to vow revenge on people who cross her in even the slightest way. This is evident by her stopping Dib from showing Professor Membrane evidence of Zim's alien origin because he had taken the last slice of pizza. She cares little about other people, save for her brother's well-being, as evidenced by the movie Enter the Florpus, where she shows she cares about her brother to some degree. Gaz is maniacal and does things only if it benefits her. She's not inherently evil, just a jerk. Next is Dylan Beekler from Golan the Insatiable. Dylan is a young goth girl, possibly the youngest character on this list. Forget it, Mom. You don't get me. Nobody gets me. She is responsible for the summoning of Golan and is his fervently loyal acolyte. Dylan was once a happy-go-lucky child who enjoyed puppies and rainbows until her best friend started dating her older sister. She was left with a mental scar, coupled with some physical scars, lacerating her lower eyelids, leading to the dark tear-shaped mascara on her face. She becomes withdrawn, moody, and bitter, getting into fights at school and doing a multitude of things for Golan. Dylan, much like Gaz, isn't evil, but she does many bad things throughout the series. Next is Kevin Levin from Ben 10. Kevin was a teenage delinquent turned heroic plumber who helps Ben and company during their adventures. He was treated as a freak during his younger years, leading to his sociopathic tendencies and lack of empathy. He was selfish and disregarded the well-being of other people and had a deep hatred for people and society at large. However, he was trapped in the null void in Carsicon and slowly turned over a new leaf making amends with Ben and Gwen during his later years. He then became a hero, showing disgust for those who abuse or take advantage of others whose heart was always in the right place. He's willing to end one life to save millions and has a hidden softer side. If it wasn't for Alien Force and beyond, he would rank much lower. The bronze medal of evil is South Park's Henrietta Biggle. Henrietta is a fourth grader and a member of the goth kids who hang out behind South Park Elementary. There is sadness so deep it pulls me down. She has a hatred towards emos, vampire kids, and anyone she considers a conformist. Not to mention she and the other goth kids are part of the Cult of Cthulhu, allowing the powerful Elder God to take over the Earth. However, they leave this cult after they found out that Cthulhu didn't change anything for them. She is responsible for a laundry list of crimes, including arson, attempted murder, kidnapping, and Grand Theft Auto. She's among the few characters on this list that have actually committed crimes. This is why combining that with their support of Cthulhu places her here on the list. The Silver Medal of Evil goes to Luna from Hell of a Boss. Luna is a hellhound and the personal secretary of Blitz and the immediate murder professionals, a group of imps who kill humans in the living world. She's cynical, irritable, rude, and apathetic, even towards her co-workers like Moxie. She doesn't have much work ethic and has a short temper. She punted a baby in a stroller because Moxie questioned why she was eating his lunch. Despite her irritability, she struggles to talk with Vortex and understands when she hurts people's feelings, even trying to apologize to Blitz after. Not to mention she kills dozens of humans and the dorks' headquarters. Luna doesn't have many redeeming qualities, but she definitely has more than our gold medalist. The gold medal of evil goes to Shigo from Kim Possible. 
Shigo is a superhuman turned evil supervillain and is easily the evilest goth character on our list. She has an explosive temper and jumps into violence. She's abrasive and able to scare Dr. Draken by just raising her voice and takes great pleasure in the evil acts she commits. Not only is she a destructive force, but she's by far the least redeemable character on this list. She enjoys her evil, and she shows no sign of stopping. Also, 11 different countries have a warrant out for her arrest. Shiko laps the competition and laughs at them while she does so. But some of these gothic guys and gals have earned a couple of extra medals. Our Darwin medal for the stupidest character goes to Mavis. Despite being over 100 years old, she's easily tricked by Dracula's fake humans and Johnny's disguise. Earning our pride medal is Sam Manson. Like we said, she likes to push her vegetarian lifestyle on other people, showing she is proud of the way she lives. The sloth medal goes to poor Misery, who doesn't do much because of her curse that harms people. Picking up the gluttony medal is Marceline, who is often eating anything with shades of red or pink when she pops up. Gwen earns our lust medal due to her losing her friends because of her relationships. Grabbing the wrath medal is Gaz, who's willing to harm people simply because they cross her. Finally, the Envy Medal goes to Kevin Levin, who's envious of Ben's Omnitrix and tries to take it from him at least once. Alright guys, that's a wrap! That's the list. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.